In this video, we'll work an example problem of a vertical curve. So we're, we're presented with a given figure, and we're asked to calculate the elevations for all whole stations and the station and elevation of the low point. So with the given information, we know we're going to need to take that information and turn it into our parabolic equation specific to this vertical curve. So we start with y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. For a, we know that term is g2 minus g1 over 2 times l. So g2 is 3.2 minus g1. g1 is negative 4.8. Again, we got to make sure we keep that negative sign with it. Divided by 2 times the length. So the length in this case isn't explicitly given, but we can subtract the PVC station from the PVT station and get a length of 550 feet, which is equivalent to 5.5 stations, which is actually what we want to input uh, for this parameter A. So when we work out that calculation, A is going to be 0.7273. B is just G1. G1, again, negative 4.8. It's very important to keep that negative sign with it. And C is our PVC elevation. We're not given the PVC elevation, but we are given the PVI elevation. We can find the PVC elevation by taking the PVI elevation and subtracting G1 multiplied by half the length. So we'll take that st elevation of the PVI 104.48. We're going to subtract negative 4.8 multiplied by 5.5 stations divided by 2 will give us an elevation of the PVC of 117.68 feet. Again, this should make sense. The elevation of the PVC is higher than the elevation of the PVI, uh, so it's at least a reasonable answer from this perspective. So we've got our vertical curve that we're looking for. It's going to tie in these two grades, the G1 and G2. That's the smooth transition. This curve is defined by our parabolic equation that we just solved for each of the ind independent parameters where y equal is going to equal 0.7273x squared minus 4.8x plus 117.68. So we're going to use this equation. We're asked for the whole stations. We're going to set up a table that we're going to use this equation to find the each elevation of interest. And so starting with this table, we would have a blank table that has the station, the x distance in stations, and the elevation. So the first column, our first station is just going to be our PVC. And then we're going to go in whole stations, like the problem asked us, until we reach the PVT. So the whole stations would be 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23. And again, ending on that PVT station. X. It's just the distance along the curve. So all we're doing is subtracting the station of interest, uh, st subtracting the PVC station from the station of interest. So x is x at the PVC is zero stations from the PVC. The next one, station 19, we're going to subtract off that PVC station. We're going to distance of 0.7 stations. Going to station 20, we're going to subtract off the PVC station. We'll get a distance of 1.7 stations and so on. And we'll see the last one, the PVT, should be, the X for the PVT should be the full length of the curve, 5.5 stations, and that's what we get uh, for, the, uh, for the final X distance here. Next, for our elevation, we're going to plug each of these X's that we calculated in the table into our parabolic equation. So our Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C. We're going to plug in these X's into this equation. And we'll see, we'll find the elevation for each of these points. And we'll see a general trend in the elevations. We've got a sag, so we're going to see at each end, the elevations are higher and they drop in the middle. And that's the pattern that we should see when we're dealing with a sag vertical curve. For the low point, because the, the given information shows that we've got a sag curve, we know it's a low point. We have our equation for finding the location of the low point, x equals negative g1 times l divided by g2 minus g1. We're going to plug in the values we know. So we're going to have negative, negative 4.8 for g1. l is 
divided by 3.2, and it would be minus negative 4.8, which is also a positive. So we can solve that and come up with 3.3 stations, or x is 330 feet from the PVC. And we'll see that this holds true, that the location of this low point is on the side of the PVI with a flatter grade. So the 3.2% grade is flatter than the 4.8%. And so we would expect for this low point to occur on the right side of the PVI as we're looking at it uh, in this example. So we can add that value of 3.3 stations or 330 feet to the station of the PVC is going to give us a low point station of 21 plus 59.61. And usually it's very important to do that, that final step of adding the X to the PVC so we know in the more global project stationing level where that actual low point occurs, not just relative to the specific vertical curve. So we've got that 330 feet for x that represents the location of the low point, but we want to go back to the general equation of the curve and plug in that x value to determine the actual elevation of that low point. So y equals 0.7273 x squared minus 4.8 x plus 117.68. We're going to plug in 3.3 for our x value in each of these points. Simplifying it, y is going to be 7.92 minus 15.84 plus 117.68 will give us an elevation of 109.76 feet. So the elevation of our low point is 109.76 and that occurs at station 21 plus 59.61.